G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, we're gonna be taking you through my top 10 players of the competition in the 2021 AFL season. Now you may remember I did this video at the start of the 2020 season as well, and at the time I didn't really plan on this being an annual tradition, but you know what, why not? It's a tremendously hard thing to do to try and pick just 10 elite players of the competition, albeit in order as well. So in today's video, I'm gonna go from 10 to first, who I think are the 10 best in the comp. Don't forget, if you haven't checked them out already, our video today is brought to you by manscaped.com. Using the code TRUEFOOTY20, you can get 20% off and free shipping on their male grooming products. So go check out their website and put that discount code to good use. But without further ado, let's get into the video. At number 10, this might surprise a few people. In fact, it surprised myself when I put this guy in my list. I'm gonna go with the oldest player on this list, Collingwood's Scott Pendlebury. He turns 33 during the season of 2021, but he hasn't really lost a step at all. Not a player that really relies on his athleticism anyway. He's the sort of guy who plays in slow motion, always has that extra time, never seems to get caught, and he opens the play up with his ball use, particularly by foot as well. He was All-Australian in the 2019 season, didn't quite reach those heights in 2020, although he still played a very good season as well. Still playing at an absolutely elite level as well, and as far as I'm concerned, still a top 10 player in the competition. At number nine, we have Geelong's Tom Hawkins, who sneaks into the top 10 on the back of a career best season in 2020. He's always been a pretty ultra consistent forward for Geelong, although in my opinion, had never really hit those elite heights. Although arguably he was MVP in the 2020 season, just got pipped by Lockie Neal. But winning the common medal, you could see the prodigious talent this man has. He kicked over 50 goals in every full season since 2015. The only season he didn't was the one he won the comment in as well, and I think he's elevated himself to be a truly elite player. I'm intrigued to see what Jeremy Cameron in the same forward line does to Geelong in general and both of their respective games. But regardless, he is definitely a top 10 player in the competition. At number eight, I'm going with probably the youngest guy on this list now, and that's Brisbane's Harris Andrews. He's 24 years old and already won multiple All-Australian Guernseys in the position of a key defender. He's widely considered one of the best, if not the best, key defender in the game as it stands. And at 24 years old, in theory, he hasn't even hit his prime yet. In terms of this list, he's the highest ranked defender I have in the game. And of course, he has the potential to rise even further in future seasons. At number seven, we have Collingwood's Brody Grundy. And although he didn't have a great season in 2020, it wasn't bad enough for him to slide all the way out of my top 10. Now, we know what's great about Brody Grundy. He's a great tap ruckman. He's also really good around the ground, almost becomes another mid feel in the way that he can accumulate possessions. There's no doubt you wouldn't even put him in the top th two or three rucks in the 2020 season, but in terms of overall quality, he's still my number one ruck in the game and therefore retains his spot in seventh. At number six, I have got Lockie Neal from the Brisbane Lions. And I do wonder if it's a little bit controversial having the runaway Brownlow medal winner not even crack the top five of my list. But the reality is Lockie Neal has surged up my own rankings on the back of his first ever Charlie. And to be fair, he really just keeps raising the bar for himself each season. Previously, I maybe had the limitation on Neil that I thought he was a little bit vanilla and a bit of an accumulator, but for the sheer production value and consistency, I think he's really raised the bar for himself in recent seasons, and I can't overlook him for my top six. The fact that he averaged 27 possessions and six clearances a game in a season with shortened quarters is absolutely phenomenal. And to be honest, the only reason he's not ranked higher is I just don't think he has quite the game-breaking ability of some of the players that I'm about to mention. One player with all the game-breaking ability in the world is Patrick Cripps, and the only reason he's probably not higher on this list is because he was another player who had a down 2020. I dare say him being down on form was largely due to him maybe being physically hampered. Obviously, he's carrying a bit of a load there at Carlton as one of the best players in a young developing team, but also I'm sure there were mental challenges as well. And listening to him on the Dylan Friends podcast with Dill Buckley, he seems ready and raring to go for a huge 2021 AFL season. He's obviously an enormous clearance mid. He's an absolute contested beast and certainly on his day, one of the best, if not the best, pure midfielder in the game. If he's feeling fresh and motivated, I'm going to back him in for a huge Brownlow potential season. In fourth spot, just pipping Paddy Cripps is a player he gets compared to quite often, Marcus Bontempelli. They are pretty hard to split in terms of their overall talent, but I've just got Bont pipping him on the back of a more productive 2020 season. Now, some people prefer Bontempelli's game over Cripps because he's a bit more 
more versatile and probably a better forward as well. He's not quite the same prodigious clearance winner as someone like a Paddy Cripps, but there's no doubt he's also better on the outside. bontempelli has got that rare combination of raw athleticism and actual football intelligence and class and skill. He really is the full package and it's crazy to think he hasn't even turned 26 yet. Splitting these players is hard, like I said, but for now I've got Bont just pipping Cripps. In number three, I've got Geelong's Patrick Dangerfield. And if you remember my video last year, I actually had him in top spot, but he just falls back to the pack slightly as he just wasn't quite as good as the other two last year, in my opinion. He didn't have a terrible year as such, but I do wonder if he was a little bit injury hampered. And to be honest, it just speaks to the fact that the gap between the top three is so narrow. I don't know if he got enough credit for that amazing 2019 season. He, of course, didn't win the Brownlow, but was just pipped by Nat Fife by one single vote. There's no doubt due to his pure raw athleticism, he's definitely one of the hardest players to stop in the competition when at full flight. He's still a dangerous forward, even though he's not the best set shot, and there's no doubt he's explosive through the midfield. When he's getting the ball out of the center, running to 50 and nailing goals, he's undoubtedly one of the most entertaining players in the league and retains a top three spot in the competition for me. In number two and coming in second by the length of a bee's dick, I've got Fremantle's Nat Five. Now, obviously he notched a bit of a surprise brand in 2019, where I think generally by the wider community, they didn't really consider him one of the favorites that year. He didn't quite reach those heights in 2020, but there's absolutely no doubt he is a dominant midfield force and is Cripps-like in his ability to win clearances. Similarly to a Pat Cripps as well, Fife is playing a lot of the peak of his career at the moment in a team that has been rebuilding and he doesn't have a lot of midfield support. However, I think that is starting to shift at Fremantle with guys like Brayshaw, Chera and Sarong really developing as well to really give him that support in 2021 and beyond. Now we know Fife does play forward a bit, partly due to the fact Fremantle don't have any good strong key forwards, but also potentially to preserve his career. I wonder if that will cost him another brown load down the track, but either way, he's a modern day great and comes in at number two on my list. And finally, the number one player in the competition for me this year is Dustin Martin. There's only so many superlatives out there that haven't been used for Dustin Martin. He's an absolutely incredible player and he surges from third to first for me this year on the back of his finals performance. Performance. Now he's a hard one to compare to someone like Fife as well because he doesn't do it as consistently throughout the season but kind of like Richmond he's a bit of a barometer he really does prime himself for finals and ultimately the players who play well in big finals have the biggest legacy. Not only is he a big game player he's arguably the best ever big game player with three Norm Smith medals to his name. I think we saw in the 2020 grand final with his four match winning goals we saw him play to a level that I don't know if I've ever seen Fife or Danger truly reach in a single game. That's why for now he surges into top spot on this list but I wouldn't be surprised if in 12 months I have the top three jumbled again. So that is my top 10 plays in the competition as well. If you're interested I can also list some of the names that just missed out for me. I will give a shout out to someone like Buddy Franklin who is definitely on this list but frankly he just can't get on the park so if he doesn't play another game again I wouldn't be surprised at this rate and that's why I just didn't include him on this list. But if you were going off legacy out of anyone in the league right now Buddy Franklin would be very close to number one. So just missing my top 10, I had Jeremy Cameron, the 2019 Coleman medalist, who again had a down 2020 season. But if he gets back to that form, we'll probably surge back into that top 10. I also have West Coast Jeremy McGovern as probably the second best key defender in the league. Although again, injury interrupted 2020 might have hurt his ranking there. Christian Petrarca came joint third in the Brownlow medalist. He probably cuts it for my top 15, as well as the bloke who came second, Travis Boak, as well well who seems to be evergreen and getting better with age. The final player I want to nominate is Lockie Whitfield who was arguably the best player in the competition at one point in 2019. Hasn't really been able to build momentum since and I've got him roughly in my top 15 but as soon as he puts together a full season and proves himself on a consistent basis I can see him being a top 5 player in the competition. But that's it guys that is my top 10 players in the AFL. Let me know what you think I got right or what I got wrong about this list. Looking back it might not be super consistent with the top 10 I did last year as well. But of course, in addition to considering their 2020 form, I've just also had time to see the league a little bit differently and my opinions have changed. But thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.